What's one plus two plus three plus four all the way until infinity? Negative one twelfth? That can't be right. Negative one twelfth? We're going to explore the world of infinite sums and how they apply to a real world where we never observe infinity directly including in this setup here called the Casimir force that pulls metal plates together in a vacuum and creates a force from literally nothing. In January 1913, an obscure self-taught mathematician named Srinivasa Ramanujan sent a letter to the Cambridge mathematician G.H. Hardy that was filled with hundreds of formulas he had just discovered. Among them was the astonishing statement that 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on to infinity equals negative 1 twelfth. But why would he say something so absurd? That's almost like in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is 42. Well, the reason he said this is not because 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way to infinity actually equals negative 1 twelfth. It truly does equal infinity. So everywhere you've seen online that says it doesn't equal infinity is absolutely wrong. But the key is that sometimes in some infinities, there's a finite piece that can be extracted and used. Ramanujan was very interested in infinite series that diverged. For example, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 repeated infinitely diverges, meaning that it doesn't trend toward one value, it just keeps increasing to infinity. The same is also true for 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and so on. It also diverges and goes to infinity. But we also can easily see that 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on is different than 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on. So what if we took 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on forever and subtracted it from 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on forever? What would be the leftover finite part of that equation after the divergent infinite parts canceled out? This question is kind of like if I told you that I had an infinitely tall mountain named Mountain A and another infinitely tall mountain, Mountain B. But Mountain B is taller than Mountain A. Is there a way to figure out the finite real number difference between the heights of both of these mountains? For example, look at these two mountains, one in front of the other, a red one and a blue one. As I zoom out farther and farther, they both rise to infinity. From far away, they look identical. Their infinite growth is the same. But infinities can still hide a finite difference. If you remove the part where both mountains grow the same way, what's left is a small finite offset. And when you look close enough, you can finally see that offset. Even though both mountains are infinitely tall, the leftover difference between them is finite. Now in this simple example, the leftover difference is easy to spot. It's just the vertical offset between two straight lines. But Ramanujan was dealing with something much more complicated, infinite curved growth. This method is now called the Ramanujan sum. And it basically says that if you have an infinite sum like 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n, you can write the sum as a function of n. In this case, the sum would be equal to n times n plus 1 over 2, where n is an integer. But Ramanujan was interested in something else. He knew that this summation formula only works for integers. So you have to plug in 1 or 2 or 3 or so on. You can't plug in 1.1 or 0 or 3.27. Those aren't integers. So it's not really a continuous function. It only works in chunks of whole integers. But is there another function we can define that works for any value of n, but still equal to the original function at whole integers? Well, about 100 years earlier, the mathematician Euler had discovered exactly that. He found a formula, the euler maclaren summation formula it's now called, that basically uses integrals to approximate the sum, but for any value of n. So here I've graphed the ordinary finite n summation formula in red, so our regular equation, and the euler maclaren approximation in blue. And if I zoom out, you can see at very large values of n, they're almost identical. Both of them shoot off to infinity. But just like with our infinitely tall mountains, there's still a tiny finite offset between them. And that's what Ramanujan recognized. He said if you subtract the euler maclaren expansion from the discrete sum and then throw away the parts that blow up, the finite leftover piece is negative 1 12th. If you use some other random infinite sum like 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, you find out that you get another leftover part. In this case, it's negative 1 half. So there are these finite parts that we can extract from infinite sums. So this is all cool mathematics, but where do we ever see real infinite summations like this in real life? 
Well, quantum field theory tells us that every point in space is filled with vibrating quantum fields, even in a perfect vacuum. We can test that this is true by placing two conductive plates very close together. When you do this, you change which electromagnetic waves can exist between them. Because the space is so small, some wavelengths simply can't fit into the gap. That means that the vacuum outside the plates can support more electromagnetic modes than the vacuum inside the plates. And fewer modes inside means lower vacuum energy inside. And that different creates a real force pushing the plates together. Now in this case, I'm not really measuring the Casimir effect because even with gauge blocks, they're still not perfectly smooth enough. And also you can't get perfectly parallel separation without extremely precise instruments. The uncertainty principle guarantees that a field can never have exactly zero energy. So to find the overall energy, we just have to add together the lowest vibrational mode of all the frequencies. And guess how many frequencies there are? Infinite. So we have to add mode one plus mode two plus mode three plus mode four, all the way up to mode infinity. So you see that we get this summation of one plus two plus three plus four, all the way to infinity. Now normally this would be a problem to say that something has infinite energy. But in quantum physics, we never talk about the absolute energy of something. We always talk about the difference in energies. In this case, we want to know the energy difference between the inside and the outside of the plates. Inside the plates, we also have infinitely many modes, which means infinite energy as well. But there are slightly fewer modes available, which means slightly less energy. So the calculation of the energy becomes infinity minus a little less infinity. It predicts the Casimir force perfectly. Whenever infinities need to cancel cleanly, this strange little number, 1 12th, always has a way of appearing. But there's one place where we haven't been able to get infinity to go away, and that's in gravity. Because with all other forces, we never use absolute energy. We only calculate the difference in energies, so the infinities cancel out. But with gravity, we use absolute energy to talk about the bending of space-time. So according to relativity, the enormous vacuum energy predicted by all those infinite vibrational modes should be enough to curve space-time so strongly that the universe would collapse into a black hole. But obviously that doesn't happen. So we know we're missing something with gravity. Maybe it will take another Ramanujan to figure it out. Or maybe it could be you. And also just a quick note, there are actually several different ways to arrive at the value negative 1 12th for this divergent series. Ramanujan's approach was just the first one that made mathematical sense in history. But later, other techniques were developed that made the calculation even easier in some cases. This includes things like the zeta function regularization. But the surprising and really cool thing about all this is that every correct regularization method agrees on the number negative 1 12th. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.